I just released a video on all the foils tested in this America's Cup so far after a busy week where there have been three new foils and literally days later Emirates Team New Zealand released their second test foil. Well unfortunately it wasn't included in that video but it does mean we're going to have to look at this foil in isolation. It deserves a little bit more time and just looking generally at what Emirates Team New Zealand are doing with their development also deserves a bit more time. So here is the foil they've brought out. It's got a curve to it, but it's nowhere near as pronounced as what we saw on their banana foil. Um, some of the interesting features is a far more defined bulb at the, at the root rather than the blended bulbs we saw them using at the end of the last America's Cup and on their banana foil. So if we bring up the the mug shot for their new foil, you can see quite a defined bulb edge um, with wings going into that bulb rather than kind of be blended as a one piece wing. Still pretty low aspect ratio compared to what we saw with the last cup, but actually I don't think Emirates Team New Zealand are leading the way on foil area in the same way they were in the previous America's Cup. So this is a banana foil if we just flip quickly to that you can see the large amount of curve although I've had it pointed out to me that whilst there is certainly curve in these wings a lot of the overall curve could be coming from a bit of anhedral set in at the root but certainly this large kind of blended bulb area which we don't see in in the new foil a lot more kind of centralized mass in that bulb with less pre-bend in this it looks looks at basically just that rather than a deliberate curve but actual you know just a bit of bit of pre-bend that can be taken out under under loading but yeah not a huge step down in surface area no addition of wing tips and you know some interesting little features in terms of the cameras mounted um, and these um, kind of matrix pressure sensing devices so what I find slightly interesting about this new foil is it's been launched on the starboard side. The banana foil was on the port side. So they've obviously gone back to kind of testing this foil against the one design AC40, probably as a, a more of a known value, which I guess in some ways makes sense. Maybe they have better data um, kind of Obviously, it's a lot simpler foil, the OD foil, so maybe it's easier to extract information in the comparison. But what I really don't understand is, you know, and I made a whole video on this with Emirates Team New Zealand and how they'd um, got a rule for these AC40s where they could effectively do two boat, two boat testing and split their foil quota across their two AC40s so long as they didn't take the AC40 hulls out of class. And that was quite an interesting way that was written to the rules, but it does give them this opportunity to perhaps test this new foil, their second foil, against their banana foil on two boats. And yet there's no sign of them actually doing that. One of the reasons why I think they might not have started off at least with um, two boat testing with the banana foil on one boat and this new foil, their second foil um, on the other, despite writing that into the rules, is the amount of modification it needs to the control systems to allow that on both boats. It would mean fitting out both of their AC40s with these control systems, which is possibly quite a cost. To me though, that really seems worth it. And I don't know, I kind of speculated that they'd gone all this effort to write in the rules for the AC40s and LEQ12s to make it so that they could test their quota of LEQ12 equipment across two boats should they wish. And yet they're not doing that. So it seems like it would have been made intuitive sense to test this against a banana foil, A against B, um, where people could swap around, feel the two different foils, get the nuances of them on the same day in the same conditions, or put this new foil on the second boat so they could A, B test between two different boats. But keeping just one of their AC40s as the predominant test platform and not altering the other, and then not even putting both their test foils at once just strikes me as slightly odd. 
albeit we've only had one day of testing with this for all. So, you know, those options are still available to Team New Zealand. See how low aspect ratio this American Magic foil, their slightly curved foil, is. Um, and if we just flick back to the new MHC Team New Zealand one, certainly they've got a much larger area probably a larger bulb as well and which team new zealand in terms of what we're seeing in the test falls aren't leading the way in reducing area like they were in the last cup reducing the aspect ratio you know more and more and more might not be the way to go uh, certainly the last cup they were getting to grips with a foiling monohull and the learning curve was so steep you had to almost build something that you thought possibly wasn't saleable then hope the sailing team could get get up to scratch i don't think we were quite at that point in the design proliferation arc so the differences might be more in control systems than just absolutely shading off shaving off area the other explanation as to why emirates team new zealand might be running slightly larger foils than what we see on american magic and i think it's still larger than what we're seeing on luna rossa as well an explanation for that could be that, you know, Luna Rossa and American Magic have to make it through a challenger um, qualification series to get into the cup, a challenger series. And that's going to take place earlier in the year, potentially with better sea breezes, stronger sea breezes than what we'll see in the cup. So American Magic have to, American Magic, Luna Rossa, Ineos, Alinghi have to build a foil which is going to win that Challenger Series competition, which is probably going to be sailed in stronger winds and might favour a smaller foil. But remember, they are only allowed when they start racing to have one foil design, three foils, but all built to the one design. So it's basically one foil, one foil design should do it all. And they've got a build for both the challenger series and the america's cup which is going to be in october we know the wind's not going to be as strong as october in october emirates team new zealand the benefits of being a defender only have to optimize their equipment for october conditions which may explain to a degree whilst we're not why we're not seeing them absolutely um crunch down on foil area you let me know is it is it interesting to you that Emirates Team New Zealand are no longer leading the way with low area foils? Is it interesting that they've moved away from their kind of blended bulb of the last cup? Or do you see something else in this foil design that I'm not seeing which um, which could be a hidden benefit? So I'm off to Garda doing a bit of sailing on my own. Got the RS800 Europeans there next week at Torbole. Um, wish me wish me luck for that competition i've got some videos pre-recorded we're going to look at both the alinghi their new uh, delta foil with the tubercles on and a bit more depth of the ineos new banana foil because that's got some very interesting features and not all that i can quite explain yet so i'd really um value your kind of opinions and insights on that so keep the comments coming keep the input um and help guide me through this uh, intense recon period catch you around